right, I'm gonna be unboxing one of my controllers here. I bought four, but we're only gonna unbox one for the video. So as you can see, you got your brawler pad controller in there. Let me just focus, there we go. Sorry if this is a bit of an informal video, I'm really not looking to do much editing in this, so. Anyways, there's the brawler controller. Has a whole bunch of stuff there. You can freeze frame that if you want to read it. I'm just gonna jump right into this. So. Pretty happy with the way they made the packaging. It's really easy to open and you don't have to worry about destroying the boxes in case you're like keeping that. Ooh, there is the controller itself. It's a nice looking unit right there. Comes with some instructions showing the smoke grade controller in it. And just about us saying thank you. Thing. Retro Fighters, how to set it up, you plug it in, it's a controller. Honestly, there's not much going on with that. So, there we go. So this is what everyone has been talking about when it comes to third-party N64 controllers. I have to say, first impressions, really nice. Um, not as translucent as the regular smoke array controllers for N64, which I have one right here, just for comparison, but pretty close, almost the same. A little less purple, a little more gray, so in that way I do like it a bit more. So yeah, everything feels pretty good on this controller. Joystick feels real smooth and real good, very similar to the GameCube controller. Buttons feel good, so I'll have to break them in a bit. Matte finish, so they're a little different than the N64 controllers. Uh, a little less slippery, which is nice. But I want to say there's a little bit more uh, play in pushing them. That might change as I break it in them. D-pad feels pretty good. Standard D-pad. C buttons are a little bit bigger, which I've noticed. It feels good. Your L and R is right there. And your Z triggers. One thing I will mention is the Z triggers are not analog, even though they sure look like they could be. N64 does not support analog Z triggers, so that's a feature that maybe they should change, even though it feels good. There's nothing wrong with the way it feels, but there's all this play until you push it about there. And I don't know. Seems like that's just a bit, bit of a design oversight. We'll find out when I start playing some games on it. But honestly, the main reason I bought this was the joystick, and I have to say, very happy with it. Feels good. So this is just a quick overview of the Brawler 64 Smoke Gray Edition. I have not used any of the other Brawler 64s or the Fantastic series, but I finally saw that they came out with Smoke Gray and decided, you know what, I'm gonna bite the bullet. I already have some Smoke Gray controllers. And I have to say, pretty happy so far. One thing I noticed right off, out of the box, um, it's a little different color. It's not quite what I was expecting, to be quite honest. And if I put a light on it here, you will see A little bit different, pretty similar, not quite exactly the same. Still pretty happy with it. Wish the plastic was a little bit more transparent. I like to be able to see what's going on inside the controller. If you look at this one here, you can just simply see all of the stuff inside of it. It's pretty funky, pretty cool. Let's go over to the Brawler 64. And you can kind of see it, but it's it's kind of foggy. Um, that's just aesthetics, though. Functionality, the controller is absolutely great. So, let me just grab this here. Here is the new joystick on the Brawler 64. 
much nicer. Nice and soft rubber on it too. Kind of reminds me of the GameCube controller, just not ribbed for her pleasure, you know? So. If you like the GameCube controller, but you don't like the GameCube sticks that you can get to replace traditional N64 sticks, because quite honestly they're junk, go with the brawler. One thing I must mention is I absolutely love the N64 controller. Um, a lot of people are going to argue with me there, but I think it's phenomenal. When you're playing 2D games, you just hold it like this, easy peasy, just like a Super Nintendo with the prongs on it. Playing 3D games, you're playing like this. Got the trigger on the bottom, which is really nice. But the joystick, as much as I love it, which I do, I actually do, it's very precise. Design-wise, they're just guaranteed the fail over time. I know you can get stick butter or stick lube or whatever you call it, but that sounds like a pain to me. So I wanted to just go something like this, which I have to say, pretty impressed with it. They kind of went for a flat finish on it, uh, kind of a matte finish, not so glossy on the buttons. Everything feels pretty good. C buttons are a little bit bigger. Nothing crazy, nothing to write home about. The buttons feel good though. Not quite as good as N64 controllers, but I'd say eight, nine out of 10, you know. Pretty damn good. You got your L button and your R button. They have fixed in this update. Their L you can push and rotate the stick. I've heard on older models that you can't do that. You have your Z triggers, two of them. One here and one here. They feel good, but that being said, they're not analog triggers. They are still just instant response, much like the traditional N64 controller. There's the button right there. These ones work just the same. So while it feels good, a little bit less practical. But honestly, the reason why you bought this controller is the joystick. And I have to say, it feels good, like really good. I'll be doing a much more in-depth review about this controller as I finish uh, Super Smash Bros. I'm gonna be finishing it on my EverDrive 64, so hopefully you tune in and get to watch me do that. So I just kind of wanted to show you just how you exactly hold the brawler controller. It's just like a regular controller for the most part. You're gonna have your thumb on the stick there or here, A button and the C sticks. You got your uh, bumpers right there and the Z triggers. N64 had its three prong design. I like it, a lot of people don't like it. It's a little small for some people, a little tight. I don't mind it, I find it pretty nice that everything's close together. This just gives you a little bit more space. So, the next thing I wanted to show is compatibility. What can you use in the back part? Right off the bat, I'm just gonna tell you right now, the transfer pack is a no-go. It fits, but it does not work. It does not recognize games as Pokemon Stadium or Pokemon Stadium 2. We do have the controller pack here. This is an official Nintendo one. Simply just flip it over and bang. You heard that nice click. It's in there good and it feels good. Taking it out, easy peasy. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. I don't have a first party Nintendo uh, rumble pack. I have this generic tremor pack. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one with some seriously expired batteries that I need to change. But putting it in the controller, you just simply line it up and click. It is in there good and tight. One thing I will mention though, is if you're planning on switching between the memory pack and the tremor pack, um, don't is my, my advice, honestly, cause Taking out the memory card is easy. Taking out the tremor pack. Ugh, geez. A little bit of work. Subscribe if you want to see more content. I'm going to be making a whole bunch more. Uh, we got some Mario Party and some Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Game Boy games in the works. It's going to take some time, but 
honestly, if you're looking for an N64 controller, you cannot go wrong with the Brawler.